Hey guys, Nick Schoen from Showtime Strength. Today, what we're gonna talk about, dynamic effort upper training, so also known as speed bench. All right, your dynamic effort training, what's the point of it? Weight has to be moved fast, all right? When you watch somebody miss a lift, what generally happens is they get, ah, and they're struggling, struggling, struggling. Why is that? Because they run out of time. Our bodies only have so much time to strain, and that time can vary um, lift to lift, bench, deadlift, squat, whatever it might be, but you're teaching your body to move force fast, all right? So what, what we wanna do is talk about how to set your reps up, how to set your accessories up, how to set your three-week waves up. We ran everything in a three-week wave on um, Sundays, which is when we do our dynamic effort benching, all right? And I know that you probably have read like percentages and what percentage to use, and that can vary, um, but let's just, I'll show you how to structure it, um, starting with, let's look at a three-week wave. All right, and this is, these are just examples of how I liked doing them, and I'm just gonna show you some of my preferences. All right, almost all our dynamic effort training, um, we would use accommodating resistance. By that I mean either some bands, some chains, um, sometimes a combination, but that's more reserved for the higher skilled um, competitor. So my thing with the coming resistance, a little bit goes a long way if you're trying to be fast, especially with upper body training with bench press. Um, you a lot of a lot of band can actually and a lot of chain can actually slow down your movement so much as changing the timing of the movement which is gonna have a negative training effect. So here's some examples of my favorite three-week waves. All right, so mini band bench. All right, and what that could look like. And this is, again, how I did it. I know other people do it differently, and that's fine. All right, so I, I like nine sets of three, and what I would do, three by three by 30%, Three by three by 35, three by three by 40 percent. All right, so there's your nine sets, 27 reps total, ending at 40 percent. And what I would do is every um, within these three sets, I do one with my weakest grip, one with a medium grip, and one with a, a grip with my pinky on the power ring. So I never went outside that power ring. So three different grips. Weak grip first. Medium grip. Then strongest grip. All right, so that, that right there is your, um, that's your whole three week wave. Or that this is a workout, so then what I do is go, so this would be week one. Week two, three by three by 35%, three by three by 40%, three by three by 45%. Then week three, three by three, by 40%, three by three, by 45, three by three, by 50%. All right, so as you can see, changing the percentages a little bit throughout the three week wave. And then once you get to this week, after you do the third week, that is when you will drop back um, and find a new bench variation. Again, this is just my example of a mini band bench. When I competed, this was one of my staples. It's the one that I felt really helped me learn to move fast, all right? So let's say you got your three week wave right here. So what do you do after that? All right, so now we need to go into accessories and everybody can do this a little bit differently. Um, I usually would follow up my um, barbell movement on speed day with a dumbbell movement. So what that means, we could go three by 15 to 20, flat dumbbell on week one. So three to three sets, 15 to 20 reps. Week two, three by 15 to 20 
incline dumbbell. Week three, three by 15 to 20. Floor press. Week four, when you come back around, you could go three by 15 to 20. Um, overhead press. All right, so every fourth week you can throw in an overhead variation. Uh, if you're pressing a lot, I think overhead pressing can really beat up the front delts, but it's something to keep in there just in a rotation. All right, so again, do our main bench movements. All right, this should be fast. Taking 45, no more than 60 seconds um, rest in between sets. My favorite was four people. Four people seem to be about the perfect set, uh, perfect work to rest ratios. So one person spots aside, one person hands out if needed. You got people on the sides um, loading weights, changing weights, and then the person lifting. And the lifter was always ready to go. So then after dumbbells, then what do we do? Um, and what I did was I would make this a superset. So this could be week one, just for example, dumbbell rollbacks, um, that should be lats, pull-ups, then some abs, so sit-ups. All right, so three to four sets of that, depending on where you are in your competition cycle. So you got, then maybe the next week you go incline rollbacks, one dumbbell row, then maybe here, throw in a trap movement, shrug again, three to four sets is plenty there. Then the third week, maybe you go, uh, let's do a tape press. And we have videos of all these exercises. If you look through our exercise index on here. So tape press, um, barbell row, then another trap movement, face pull. So again, three to four rounds. Then really after that, this area over here, um, some guys would break off, do some concentric um, sled work, you know, front raises, face pulls with that, get into your, just your direct arm training, high rep, push downs, um, push ups, whatever your weakness is. Really just throw that in, or if you need extra hypertrophy. But these workouts should really only be like 45, maybe 60 minutes. Um, they're a great way to challenge your conditioning for those that compete. But this is pretty much how I would run stuff, um, really about year round. Some other alternatives, let me wipe this off. So um, uh, let's say you want to do something different. Let's go football bar bench with chains. Um, you could go, and I do this every now and then, again, just to change the rep schemes up a little bit. Week one, five by five. Um, you can go 30%. Actually, we usually go a little bit higher. Usually, if we were doing fives, it'd probably be like 30, 35, 40, 40% up to 50%. Week two, add 5%. Week three, add 5%. And you could follow that same thing with the dumbbells. And what you do, the point of the dumbbells all right, let's say use the hundreds. Week one, you get 15 reps. So there's a few different ways you can progress those. One would be if you got 15 on each set with the hundreds, next time you come back to that, if it's in four weeks, whatever, say, all right, I need to get 18 reps with these 100 pound dumbbells, all right? And that doesn't sound like that much, but over three sets, you just got nine extra reps with 100 pound dumbbells 
you just increase 900 pounds of total work volume just on that exercise. So these little changes are how you make big changes long term. All right, obviously you can go up, all right, and say use the hundreds, use the 105s, all right, or stay at the hundreds, stay at sets of 15 and get another set in. So now you're increasing your total volume 15 times nine, what's that, 400 or 1,350 pounds, all right? So you just got over 1,300 pounds of extra volume in on your training. But the biggest things I think with the dynamic effort training, what people have to realize is rest ratios, all right? I always looked at our speed day almost as conditioning. Um, I think it really almost helped me more than the max effort day. All right, so keep rest minimal. And the thing is, again, depending on where you are in your training cycle and your competition cycle, you can adjust those and manipulate those variables based on what your goal is. If you're out of season, you don't have anything coming up, you might kick back, maybe have longer rest periods, or you might drop the bar weight and um, really test yourself and just go you and one other person, no weight change back to back and forth. That's a fun thing you can do. Um, fast. This I think is the biggest problem I see and I, I uh, also experience this. If the bar slows down on dynamic effort day, you are not training in the dynamic effort method. It does have to move fast. All right? I don't I don't know how else to explain it. All right? So if you have to wonder like is the bar moving fast enough if you're asking your training partners did I move that fast enough? The answer is probably no, and it's probably time to lighten up the load. All right, percentages um up here, you can tell I was sort of uh, wishy-washy about what percentages exactly to use. Don't get too hung up on percentages because when you look at percentages, there's a few different things you have to remember, all right? Training age. How long does somebody, how many years of training, like real training do they have? Because somebody that's got a 500 pound bench probably has a pretty high training age. So when you're talking percentages, that's gonna be a more realistic um, percentage in relation to that lifter and in relation to that 500, if you say 50%, 500, that's 250. Compared to, you know, at Showtime, we work with a lot of beginning athletes. They don't, they don't really have that established training background. So saying 50% of a 200 pound bench is 100 pounds, but do they really know how what 50% is, it's a whole different thing. Then you have to look at, um, is it a training percentage? Because there's definitely a difference in training percentage and competition, all right? So for some people, um, extre extrinsically motivated people, you're gonna have a higher absolute number which would be like your competition so what you can do in competition is going to be higher because of the arousal level of the competition the crowd and so forth for me training wise i don't know if i ever deadlifted over 725 in the gym in a competition i pulled 725 probably 20 different times and it was all easier than when i did it in the gym because of that arousal level being lower all right, so just be aware of what you're basing those off of. Um, so you got training age, training percentage, whether it's a competition number you're basing your percentages off of, a training number you're basing your percentages off of, um, where, then where you're at in your competition plan, all right? If you're 15 weeks out from a meet, 16 weeks out from a meet, those percentages might not look the same, or if you're coming off a of meet, you just did a meet two weeks ago and you're just now getting back to the gym. Those numbers have to be adjusted because your body is still trying to recover from the competition that you just put it through. All right, so adjust all those back. That's why I, I tell people the longer you can wait after a meet to train, probably the better. All right, so we're gonna be doing examples of this. Um, we'll lay out some more in other videos, different ways you can use 
different three week waves you can set up, but this will give you guys a good idea of how to structure your training. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below.